and it's all around town. Watch out, the rain, these are falling down. We stay up waiting for Santa tonight. He climbs down the chimney at the speed of light. While we're dancing around the Christmas tree, hugging and kissing just you and me. I knew it, it will happen. Hey, of that. My hello. mic does not work uh, uh, because I sh <laughs> uh, shift at uh, the last minute. So I apologize for that one. Let's do it again. And through 2.0, Mr. Nartap. Uh, here we go. 
<laughs> Welcome to the warm up show with the hockey coach, Gold Cold French, directly for the beautiful country of Tan. And he's back. He just complete his last run of the Santa Claus. Everything is going to be ready for the 24th at midnight. He's back with a maybe somewhere, somehow, Toronto. We find a way to go through the storm. Mr. Inartap, welcome back. Hello, coach. Hello, Nat Hockey Nation. Great to be here. Great to be here. Finally, we're having some uh, technical difficulties there. Yeah, it's uh, you know the first one. I was uh, listening a couple of podcasts from Toronto, Canada, USA. Some of them, like uh, you know, they tried to survive that. And uh, we first of all uh, thought a prayer for everybody involved. Uh, we think about about almost like two hundred million people, Mister Natap, have some kind of you know, bad weather, and uh, you can think about the uh, you know the, the the snow, the winds, and everything like that. And if you go, <clears throat> excuse me, if you go south, uh, talking about Mississippi. Uh, Louisiana, Alabama, Texas, where they don't see those kind of the, the weather and the temperature, uh, it's not easy to see that, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's um, it's making its way through, and, you know, we just hope everybody stays, stays safe and sound and, and uh, just enjoy the time. Enjoy the time and try to stay off the roads. That's the most uh, important thing. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I don't know. You pop up on my my screen again. <laughs> you you knock the door. Oh. I look like you try to come back again on my uh, on the stuff oh, the there. Is... Yeah, the second day we said to you if you can drop the the camera lower. There we go. How's there we that? go. Yeah, I be uh, you know that's the only thing. Otherwise, uh, we have a few people in the in the in the house. We're not up, so welcome them already. We have Jeffrey uh, Curry from Taiwan is in the house. Hey, Jeffrey, welcome. We talk about uh, Luciano Graziano. Welcome back in the house. <laughs> hey, Luciano. <laughs> Going to put that like that. We're a little bit behind, but uh, Mr. Chicago Bear 97, uh, welcome in the house. Oh, you can keep it, Mr. Natap. Um, <laughs> For later, for later. It's too big. You know, the, the key about this is like the the, the, the most dangerous thing is like, you know, you can get on fire somehow. So you just be careful when you cross <laughs> some kind of door or something like that. Uh, something you have to be careful. Mr. Yamo Vartanen is in the house. Welcome, Yamo. And then we have Chicago Bear, Mr. Nathap, minus uh -huh. Minus two over there, Mr. Natap. Minus two in Chicago. I know oh, one is one day in Chicago. It's not easy. But uh, we have our friend Double J is in the house. Mr. Natap, welcome back. Welcome, Double J. Madagata, run with Kings from Utah is in the house. Welcome, Mr. Who run. Welcome, run. And he survived upstate New York uh, with some kind of storm. Mr. Jose Duarte is in the house. Welcome, Jose. Then do we have other people? Uh, oh, yeah, we have uh, Mr. Dan Ash uh, Joseph Laham from uh, Houston, Texas. Mr. Natap, I'm sure it's freezing over there. <laughs> hey, Joseph. At least his team is not freezing anymore. Yes, sir. Marion Kirk is in the house, Mr. Natap. Hey, Ryan. William McClary is back in the house. Welcome. <laughs> it's a Christmas tree, William. Fernando, Fernando Tavares is in the house with us tonight. Fernando, how's it going? Rick Bengal, directly from Halifax, uh, ready for the World Junior Championship, is in the house. Welcome, Rick. No jail. <laughs> and I feel I have a double uh, trouble uh, today, uh, dances at Christmas uh, for Mr. Yamo. Uh, be careful. Uh, it's not a good place to get there for sure. Uh, about that, <clears throat> I tried to get some <laughs> kind of information on reading the the news right now was going on with Montreal Canadian. Real Deal Prim is in the house. Hey, Real. Do we have something else? No, look like we have got everything up here, Mr. Natab. A couple of information. Uh, 
And uh, we have Elevan Gaze missing our top tonight. Yeah, uh, well, actually, we got a bit of a break because I think a couple games were postponed. So, yeah, but uh, <laughs> August night we have eleven game on the schedule. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we'll get happened. to them, coach. We'll get to them. Oh yeah, we're going to go through this uh, about this for sure. Uh, first of all, Mister Natal, we're going to go that way because uh, you know we do this a lot of time, and 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 then I think it's I, I think I feel like it's Christmas, like it's we give away, and you know it's uh, it's love and it's passion and compassion and it's gift, it's present, and uh, unbelievable, Mister Natal. We have a lot of people in the bus. A lot, I know, but but that's the way you're supposed to party with a lot of people, and. Secondly, we have a new people go to the bus. Never happened before. That's right. That's so right. That's, new for me, that's really, really impressive about that one there. Of course, honestly, we have seven games. We, we do some prediction, but with the game number eight uh, with the Toronto and the Flowers, so we gave that W for everybody, right? That's correct. Yes, everybody and got a bonus there. Exactly. So we want to be generous for the time. So, you know, you always start your day with 1-0, so that's, that's not too bad at all. Uh, honestly, <laughs> but uh, we have a few people have an amazing, great six and two, Mr. Natap, yesterday, and we have to send them to the bus uh, party. And what about to have a bus party just the day before Christmas? Uh, this is a great for them uh, to have that kind of opportunity and celebrate as a group together. And I'm talking about, let's of course, send them uh, off. Exactly, uh, Mr. No, no, Joe Double J is uh, in the group. Uh, uh, Mr. Natap, uh, we have uh, Yan, Chicago, Rand Kirk, uh, John Mickelson. Uh, all of them are six and two, Mr. Natap. Unbelievable conversation for each one of them. It's time to send them to the bus. Here we go. So that's happening for them. Congratulations, uh, Mr. Natap, and for all the people and the, and the boss. Uh, uh, great performance. So we'll see how they're going to respond and come back tonight. Uh, we have a few people go to jail, but we'll talk about them a little bit later and the show. Unfortunately, uh, we, we had to put people in the jail. It's Christmas. With the, some people need some celebrate together with it, too. So uh, uh, we have a, a new band of music. Uh, it's called the uh, Arcanation Band. And he's going to be performing in the side of the bus, and he's going to be performing at the jail uh, about ways, Mr. Natap. So uh, that's happening. Well, welcome back, RJ Calabro, Mr. Natap, back in the house, by welcome, the way. Welcome, RJ. So, you know, we have a couple of people like that. I can be with Calgary Picks or Coach and Enzata. I have a better record. You be can please shoot the puck for Yamo about that one there. Thank you so much. Uh, we love the, well, we uh, the free gift, Mr. We Natap. Have to catch up. Um, yeah, Franco Yacono is in the house, Mr. Natap. Uh, Ciao, Franco. Noel, Merry Christmas, and uh, Franco, thanks so much uh, uh, to join us tonight on the beautiful, great uh, Friday night. Uh, and then we have Fernando Tavares. Uh, I will tell you one thing, hearing you guys talk, uh, don't miss the weather at all. Uh, 11 plan and uh, 15 degrees, the only thing I miss, uh, the white Christmas. Uh, yep, so right about this, Fernando, I feel the same way here. And that beautiful country of Thailand. When we send a tap, I don't know what's going on. I, I, yeah, nothing. Like, like, it's not Christmas here. Uh, you, not about the weather. It's like, I don't know. Maybe I don't live in Bangkok or whatever it is. But uh, where I am right now, you have no clothes to tell me right now it's Christmas. Uh, because it's not Christmas at all. Uh, I have no lights. Maybe uh, in the building here. Uh, because I live in a condominium. You need a little where, bit of that, though. Yeah, you need so a little bit of that just to get into the spirit of the of the season, and uh, you know, sort of remind you and us and everyone else about the our, our roots and, and generosity that we you know should be exhibiting on a daily basis, not just at Christmas time. But yeah, I, I I'm not a big fan of winter, but obviously Christmas is uh, special. We welcome Denis Rodriguez. Welcome back in the house. We took a little bit longer for you, welcome, Mr. Natap. Uh, what, uh, honestly, pay your attention last night uh, between seven to eight games, depending how you want to go that direction, Mr. Natap. Uh, and the start of the night are 
Elias Peterson with five points and Eric <laughs> Carlson with four points are the best. So you have other players with three points, one goal, two assists, but I think you have to go with two of them. So tell us what happened yesterday. Well, maybe something pay you attention. You have a lot of good game overall uh, last night in NHL. Well, that game right there, the Vancouver one, of course, uh, it, it was a, a seesaw battle. I thought, I thought for the most part, uh, Seattle had um, most of the control of that game, and I wish we'd known that Peterson was going to be playing. We thought he'd he was still uh, uh, out of the lineup, and that uh, that makes a big difference for Vancouver. You have somebody of his caliber playing, especially on power play. Uh, it's almost automatic points that he gets. Uh, but, you know, they were down um, at various points in that game. Uh, I think it was uh, 3-1 in, early in the second. Then they were down 4-2. Uh, and, and then they scored two goals, uh, including the last one uh, with about just over a minute left in the game that forced the overtime. And and uh, nothing happened in the overtime but the shootout. You know, who else but Peterson was the deciding factor there. So that that was one game that I anticipated would be high scoring game and it was. Uh the Calgary LA game um you know I mean LA skated away with the 4-3 uh victory here. Um it, it was a I think the shots on net were something you know silly like 12 to the three uh, and the score was only one one and uh, twelve to three for LA early on in the game. They had complete control, and then slowly we saw that uh, in in the third period, um, you know they got two quick goals. It was much more of a of much more of an exciting game. I thought uh, this one here should have. I, I think Calgary had every opportunity really to collect the points, but it they had to go to overtime, and at that point, uh, Kempe and ended it very early. I think in the second or third minute minute of the game, uh, so LA walks walks away with two points, and and that's uh, good on them because they earned it over the last two periods when Calgary had control of that game. Winnipeg Boston, big game there. Um, Again, this was a, a game where Winnipeg went up two nothing in the first period alone. Um, they were out shooting and out playing. I thought Boston for the most part, but you never count Boston out. And I thought they had a couple of instances where they could have really put the uh, put the game away. Uh, Winnipeg could have, but Swayman made a couple of excellent saves, and uh, both of them were on Pierre Luc Dubois. Um, late in the first period, uh, um, just fantastic saves. Uh, one I think was on a breakaway, and well, not on a breakaway, but semi breakaway. And then he got the puck again uh, around the around the net, and what a great save he made! And then the last two periods, uh, Boston, you know, took over the game. They outshot Winnipeg almost a two to one ratio. I think it was something like thirty to fifteen. Um, they got rewarded with two goals um, in, in the second period, and then they got one late uh, to seal the victory. So Boston's record uh, of being undefeated at home continues. Um, and Winnipeg, at least to me, showed that they belong. Uh, like they're not beating uh, weak teams here. They're playing with everybody. And uh, I think they're a team to contend with. I think, I think Hellebuck in the last two periods stood on his head. Uh, made some great saves. Otherwise, this could have been uh, a higher scoring game. Same thing with Carolina and Pittsburgh. You know, it was like uh, the first five, ten minutes, there were barely any shots on net. Uh, they were just, it was a very territorial first period. Um, and 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 Carolina dominated the face-offs, I thought, uh, and also carried the play for the most part. Um, and then Crosby, you know, Crosby's starting to do what Crosby has always done, and he scores. He scores. Uh, um, I think uh, it was part of both goals, seventeen seconds apart. And Carolina, you know, never gave up here. Uh, they outshot Pittsburgh in the second and third. Uh, same thing as Boston by a two to one margin. Um, and 
and then uh, your after they tied the game and went to overtime, it was your man, coach, Mr. Slavin, that scored in overtime with with twenty three seconds on a beautiful with two defensemen on the ice. That's rare. That's right. That's very rare. Yeah, but he's such a good skater and stick handler that. It, it doesn't surprise me, obviously, that he would have been on the ice. So, um, and the Battle of New York, the, the last one I'll comment on here. Um, you know, shots on net here for the Rangers were 34 to 18. Um, we started to see, in the, I'd say in the first half of the game, it was a, a tale of uh, two tails here. Like the first half was mostly Islanders. Uh, we saw Barzal was playing very well. Lee was playing very well. They held a 3-2 uh, lead going into the third. Uh, and then the Rangers just uh, took over. And it was the young kids again, Lafreniere, Kako, uh, even Goudreau contributed a goal and an assist. Uh, they, they just took over. And um, it was, it was a, a big, big win for them because these two teams are – are battling out um, in the Metropolitan Division. They're trying to juxtaposition between third, second, and, and uh, whatever they can do. But it's uh, it was it was an exciting night, and those are the ones I wanted to remark on. But you know, I could go on here with other games as well because it was a good night of hockey. Yeah, that's a lot of good night. Uh, again, a lot of action, a lot of entertaining. And that's yeah. what it, it's been that way since the beginning of the year in 2022 season, 2022-2023. So it keeps continuous to every night. And it's going to be, again, another great uh, day of hockey uh, all around the, the North America with television game, honestly. And the most important things that people have to be safe uh, uh, because it's not looking good around uh, Mr. Natap. Uh, I want to mention two things happening yesterday, Mr. Natap. Ovenskin uh, uh, become uh, everybody looking for his 801 goal to tie Gordy Orr and 102 to beat Gordy Orr. But he beat something else. Uh, Ray Book, uh, he become the, the number one with most of the shot on the net uh, in uh, history of NHL with 6,211 shots. Uh, Owen Skin accomplished just yesterday. And then uh, uh, Brent Burns uh, uh, got his 800 point with over 1,248 yeah. games. I can recall it about this. Uh, uh, we know what Owen Skin accomplished, but when we talk about Brent Burns, uh, do you believe he will belong to the Hockey Nation? Uh, the Hockey Nation show. At the Hockey, uh, at the hockey Hall of Fame? I hope so. Uh, one day or not, because he's still missing a couple of pieces of the puzzle to make it. Like, first of all, never been to the Stanley Cup, like winning the Stanley Cup. he been to one time at the final, but uh, is it good enough? Or um, what do you feel about his career? And uh, do you think he should be in the Hall of Fame? It's hard to say, because based on his numbers, he's he's close. He's... I, I think he's bordering on on the yes, more so on the yes than the no. Um, but yeah, like you said, um, I I don't know how much credence they put in in actually winning the Stanley Cup. I think the fact that he's been there is is important. It, it does stand uh, tall. Like if if you think of even Carey Price, you know, hasn't won the cup, but should that be a deterrent from him not entering the Hall of Fame? Um, you know, I, I'd say no, and the same thing with Burns. It, uh, a lot of these players, it, it really depends on the team that you you uh, inherit, obviously, through the draft. Um, I think it's been phenomenal what he's accomplished. And remember, he was, uh, he was transferred, right, like he from forward to defenseman, uh, and it's not an easy transition to make. Like we, we talk liberally about doing things like that. We, you know, we mentioned it about, uh, doing that with Jack Eye as well. Uh, but it's not easy, especially when you're going from forward to defenseman. Um, you have more responsibility as a defenseman. It's a harder position to play. Uh, you're constantly, you know, you have the full periphery of the game in front of you. It's it's uh, it's not easy. It's, it's more difficult. And he's accomplished it. And uh, I think he de- I think he deserves it. Will be interesting to follow for sure, uh, Brent Burns the next uh, couple of years if he can make it. He still have, a, you know, he's only thirty eight years old, but he's so helped and he does uh, constantly play over twenty minutes. He's another 
It's funny, we have a lot of players. Every year, for the last two years, we always said, oh, it's going to be the end of the end for them. It's going to be, the team's going to be down, the Pittsburgh too old, the Washington too old. And so it's fun playing in any shell, they are too old. And they, I'm talking about David Perron, example. And they consistently performing the center top, and they're still hanging with the youngest player in any shell. So pretty amazing when I see the situation about that. Uh, before we start, we want to talk about the preview Montreal Canadian uh, and, and start because uh, I feel like Martin St. Louis watch my videos every day, Mr. Natap. Uh, yesterday, I talked about St. Louis growing pain for the Montreal Canadian. Uh, part is kind of decision and maybe overwhelming. Uh, with the, what's going on on the ice, no reajustment about one three one. The power play look awful. Uh, he tried to win, win, win. He don't go on the progression. Uh, bench Sapkowski, Ben Anthony Richard, bench uh, uh, Jackar with only 15 minutes. And I can the list can continue like this uh, with maybe not experience behind the bench and maybe not as an experience uh, coaching with Luke Richardson example behind the bench. And I'll put together. Um, where we, I feel like, uh, okay, is it the cost of the win, win, win he want to accomplish? Maybe will cost the durability or the, the, le, or the longevity of the rebuilding is going to be a little bit longer because you don't go to draft and the top seven or top eight example, or maybe top five, honestly, that's the biggest uh, thing what the Montreal should look about this. So that was the purpose of my video yesterday with Cole Caulfield at the end of the video and um, and Anthony Richard. So I just want to share me with you the video about what was happening. But tonight we have a couple of shows that look like I said, Martin, so we watch my videos. Uh, Michael Epesada is in, Dadenov is out. Uh, Jake Adam is between the pipe. And the split, Caulfield is his key missing at that. Yeah, he's trying everything, right? Um, he's he's seeing if he can get some an alternative line going. Um, you can't just rely on the first line, uh, especially when you're on the road. You're closely checked. You don't have that last change, uh, and it's been affecting their play. Now, credit to Montreal as well that they they've come around, they've come out of it with some points as well, uh, even though they you know they lost to Colorado and. Uh, but it's it's difficult. It's difficult as a coach. Like what we forget here is not only is this a developmental procedure for the team, it's also developmental for Martin St. Louis. Like he's not here to be a player. He's here to be a coach. And that's a different mandate than than being a player. You have to you have to understand that, you know your entire team. You have to have communication with them. You have to try different things, see what works. Uh, evaluate your talent and use them appropriately and that's why i think we're seeing this in and out now his winning mentality you know coach I, I i would say don't worry about it and i'll tell you why because he can emphasize winning as much as he, he wants but this team is what they are and really if it weren't for the goaltending that at times has stood on their head and and stolen i'd say about six or seven points minimum I think for them in the course of the year, they would have been at the, at the very bottom right now or close to it. And I what still think. What is the point if they finish eight because of goaltender, uh, because he bench players, because he want to win, 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 that would create them to losing a possibility to get a super elite players. But what are you going to put in there? Like uh, at the end of the day, I can say, okay, you see I'm sit, uh, Justin Byron, Harvey Pinal. Anthony yeah, Rizal, and, and, and they're going to cause you play. to win the game. That, why, why Albert play 15 minutes? Yeah, but that will happen. That will happen after the trade. But will be happen. It would be too late. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, we'll see Albert play more minutes until the March 3rd. Yeah, but... So it's about 20 games at the end of the year. So you're going to play 16 year, 16 games to hanging there. The time you're going to get there, the bottom split right now. You have six bad teams in NHL. You have six good teams in NHL. And Montreal is between. So one Montreal is going to be worse and worse and worse. It's going to be too late to go down with Arizona or with Chicago, or with, with uh, Philadelphia, whatever they are, and Anaheim and Columbus. And that's going to mess completely the standing versus the win-win-win 
at developing, developing, developing. Why to bench Anthony Rizal last game? But we could say we could say the same thing about Arizona. Why did they keep playing Vamel Vamelka in that? Like this guy's been stealing games. But for they don't Arizona. have anybody else. He has no bet. Well, they do. They have a couple of uh, decent players as well. Did, uh, who? What was the next? The 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 goaltender over there? The backup goaltender? No, no, the goaltending. Yeah, I, I understand that, but they do have a backup goaltender. But they, Arizona, Mister Tad, tanks in the beginning of the season. What's that? They. They tank since the beginning of the season. They didn't make any moves on this off season. No, they didn't add I know, more but, players but to say, still... oh, we're going to try to win. And they let play Keller. Yeah, but... They let play the young player inside. The, the, they don't pinch anybody. Matt Shelley play right now. Who knows Matt Shelley at the beginning of the season? Nobody. He play on the second line. We have right now, we, yeah, we, but... it's 1-1 one, one or 2-2. Two, two. He, he bench Sakaski. So are you suggesting that they just tank? Is no, play young players. Why to bench Anthony Richard last game? Well, we don't we don't know exactly what went down there. Like maybe maybe he was told to do something specific. He he was given ample opportunity to. But try it's a to mistake, Mister Nata. It's a mistake. It's not. He creates something ma major. Was it why why to I let play that enough over Anthony Richard? Well, I, I know we, we've kind of been through this before. I, I, I think part of it, part of it is because they're trying to showcase some players. They have it's, to build up their value. For me, for, for me, someone tell me happen. is show someone and, and showcase Mr. Nata. They have all the clips. Like someone tell me they want to show someone. They have all the game, all the clip. If you want to study Anthony Tadanap, Mr. Nata, you're going to see his clip every single shift, slow motion. Everything what he does on its front and goal with camera. They have all. Well, so once someone said, oh, well, we need to send a scout over there to watch the players, they can get it after the game right away. So right, if you but, want to accumulate him, token, but again, that doesn't help, Mr. Natap. Are you going to get a first round pick? No, you're gonna, not going to get a first round pick for that. So what was the, what's the big deal to get fifth or four at the end of the day? But do you want to be stuck with these players at the end of the year? You yeah, no choice. Stuck with yeah, these yeah no choice. You're going to get stuck with them. Well, then that's that's not going to work well with the rebuild process because you can't have either that or after a trade deadline. If they didn't get rid of them, then you're going to sit down, Dad and Al. But that's sit why down, that's what that's uh, the key behind that. Now he did playing. that tonight, so he put that enough for the second time. The last three game over there. But my point is, they right. can put that enough on the on, on the on the shell. I'm fine. But who's going to more minute tonight, Peseta or Richard? T O I. Richard. Last game he did not. He make a mistake. He gave a penalty and then they score. Now he's going to penalize again him again. No, he won't. He won't. You'll see. He'll he'll get more ice time. But he they did not do it to understand game. My that. point is we, like because we he's focusing on one, one, one. This is for me the only problem I have. Progression, development, let play Safkaski 16 minutes. Let play Arbor 20 minutes. They, they, yeah. they don't want to do that. They protect, they protect. Why Montembo have only nine games, ten games? Why not play him, Montembo, tonight? They send back Jake Allen. Who won the game this week? It's Montembo. It's not Jake no, Allen. They, yeah, they've both been playing well. You can't. Uh, you're splitting hairs between Allen and Montembo right now. So why why yeah, do you Allen send Jake is, Allen tonight, Mister Natap? Why is he playing him? Yeah. Uh, I don't to know. Win the it's, game, it's to decision. win the game. To win the game. To win the game. Yeah, that's it. it. Jake Allen have the best score, is the top best three, the, the goaltender on the road this year in NHL. Unbelievable to say to do that, that. He has a point save percentage of 9, 2, and 9, and 2.56 on the road. But that's what he do. He tried to win tonight. He doesn't want to, to, to just play uh, players. He just want to try to win tonight. So he put everything to make sure the team have a, all the chance to win the game tonight. If not, send Montembeau. 
Okay. Just put them on the boat to see what they look like. And when they're going to figure out. I, I still think I still think more importantly that you have to build a, w- a winning culture first. There's no guarantee that if we finish in the bottom five, that you're gonna get you're gonna get that franchise player number one because really? it has to go into a lottery. Adam Fantilli, yeah, it has to. Connor Bedard. Okay, he's not a Leo okay, Carlson. You're not gonna finish. Madrid, Mishkov. You talk about the four, the best four players on the draft for the last ten years. Yeah, but you know what, though, Coach? I can name as many as you and probably double that are first-round hockey players that have gone on teams, and that team never sniffed a cup. And I'll name one right off the bat. He went in Chicago, was a Hall of Famer, never won the cup until he came to Montreal in his last year, Denis Savard. But right? is, is, that, is, got, it, is that not a super elite player? He is, but did he win the cup? Only it's when not about winning the cup, Mr. Natap. You don't build well, a team just it, to try to win a Stanley Cup. You need to throw the bill to have super elite players. Yeah, but those years, even with Chicago. I'll give you an example. Nashville, for Chicago, why they never win? They've had elite players. No, no. They don't have no super elite players. They don't have McDavid. Well, they don't, they don't no, have McDavid. They, they don't have they Austin Matthews. Shea, they had Shea Weber at his at his. Uh, highest moment. They've had some great goaltenders in Nashville. It, <laughs> well, we talk about super elite players. Um, that's the problem. We don't have super elite players. You have a chance right now to get a super elite players for 10 years. When they draft Patrick Kane in Chicago, that's what they got. When you try seven Senkos, that's what you got. That year, that's what you get right now. You get a super franchise players. Nico Shar is not a super elite player. He's a great player, but he's not a super elite player like Mick David, like carry on the team forever. That's what it's fun for me. That's what they have a possibility okay. this year to find a way to develop the, the, the players, to add more time for them, more touch, more experience, and then we see next in two years, and two years what we're going to look like. But you have a chance to pick a Fentley, a Leo Carlson, a bad out and Mishka. You go say, oh, Brandon Yeager, uh, Yeager or Ballo or Charlie Stremel. Yeah, they are good players. Sakoski is a good player, but it's not a super elite player. That's the front between yeah. for me. I think yeah, that's I what I, I not that. agree with I, what they are doing right now. No, I totally understand that. All I'm saying is there's no guarantee. Even if you finish in the bottom five, that you're going to be in that category of bottom five after that lottery there's no guarantee number one number two you don't know like who has the best player in the in the world right now Connor Bedard no right now the best player in the world that's actively played oh who it's a McDavid and have they won a cup a- again have it's they- not about the but <laughs> again it's not about winning the cup Mr. Natap Without McDavid, Are they an elite team? Right? We, we, we're going to put Nico Shara and not McDavid. What does Edmonton look like? Worse. Worse. Of course it's That's worse. my point. Yes. That's exactly my point right there. You can have Conor Bedal or you can get Carlo Parlo, Barlow or Charlie Stremel. Who do you believe you think will be better in the next five years? With Bedal or with Barlow? Yeah, but ultimately, ultimately, your task is to try to win the cup. That's that's what I'm saying, because, you know, to be in the playoffs, let's say, let's suppose they're a top ten team for the, they get Bedard, and they're a top ten team the next 10, 15 years. Would you consider that a, a successful franchise? I'd say you have a successful player. Maybe a player that will go to the Hockey Hall of Fame one day. Yeah, but, but you, will that, never you don't see your build, name on the you cup. don't build a team with only one players. I know, I know. So, yeah. but without the, if if the 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 Tampa Bay Lightning won they draft the year with without sen, seven Senkos, do you believe they're going to be better with Senkos, or they get another Yari uh, Yari Pop or Jordan Eberle or uh, RNH, for example? No, you cannot. I, do you have a special year this year? The year with Quinton Byfield, 
Tim Sousla. You know already, Barfield is not going to be your best. You can talk. Yeah. So this year is an exception. That's my point here. This year is an exception. Point is, you can have a, this year to give the, the rookies to develop better, better, faster, and quicker to let them play hockey. And don't worry about the W. Don't worry about the W. Don't worry, try what he does. He bench the players. He shot his bench. If one is in the game, he he tried to win the, the W. That's what I'm, I, I disagree with him. Let send Sakoski at the last minute of the game. Let send Arbor Jagai at the last minute of the game when he's two two. Why? Because he's going to get there in five six years. He knew what he need to do. But when you send Edmondson, Madison, Saval, and those veteran players, Devil Rat, and when this the game is is in the play right now to win the game, these young kids that cannot learn. And that's why if you want to develop a, a winning culture, you have to pay the price right now until the next three years. One is going to be in 26. Now you say, you know what? We pay the price in 23. We pay the price in 24. And the players, the young kids learn from those situations. If you protect too much, when are you going to learn? Next year? It's this year. Yeah, we have nothing yeah, to win. No, I, I understand what you're trying to say. It's just, I, I think it's also important to just develop a winning culture. Uh, that's like, I don't see guys like Suzuki, um, uh, Caulfield, uh, and, and their young defensemen, Gooley, uh, Jack I has, has their time on, on the ice suffered? Yeah, yeah, but the people we have only no. 640 right now, so <laughs> <laughs> we have 11 games to talk about this. Uh, we have William yeah. McClary, we have uh, Minnesota Kevin is in the house. Uh, welcome, everybody. Rand Kirk talking, the, the shot is on fire. Rand Burke, uh, Rick uh, Ben Cole talking. William asked a question about this. How about uh, Mikhail on the right wing? Uh, that would be the Canadian. I see that next level now for the goalie. Uh, Mikhail is going to be a winger in, in the show. By the way, uh, Mr. Natap, uh, Mikhail uh, is on, on the news. Uh, he got loaned uh, from the St. Petersburg uh, SSCSKA uh, to Sushi, the team, Mr. Natap. So um, I just want to mention that's that. That's good. Yeah, yeah, about that's this one. Uh, that's what happened. Thank you, Nat. Uh, uh, Frank Frago said not getting a spirit player to have our falling back on the previous uh, strategy build a team that maybe will make it to the playoff and then we will see Pluka building a team to win the cup. Uh, about this, Alan Barnes is in the house, Mr. Natap. Uh, uh, we apologize, uh, we take uh, all the time talking about this, it's getting hot. <laughs> Uh, we love it. I'm supposed to talk about the hockey pound Mr. Natap another time. <laughs> Hopefully, we we'll talk about this before the 2023 Mr. Uh. Natap uh, will happen. Uh, it's time to take out one the buck, uh, the the bug uh, one because uh, we have a few people, but they, they all fix Mr. Natap. Uh, they all visit the Chicago 97 County Jail. We put all them inside of this one with them and stuff that. Jose Fernando, Eric Bengal, Mr. Natap, all the one are going to be. At the jail, uh, unfortunately. Lock them up. You have to lock it up. Uh, that's what I'm looking for about this one over there. Uh, <laughs> I lost my lock it up. There you go. There we go. We lock them. Congratulations on that one. You're the last uh, before Christmas on the jail, uh, Mr. Nartap. Uh, here we go. Uh, many games we have to go. Uh, we have about uh, 20, uh, 20 minutes. By the way, tonight we have a special World Junior Championship preview, Mr. Natap, at 11.15 Eastern Time, p.m. 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 So tonight, to... after the game, we get out and come back with Michael David. I know I will go to a special 30-minute uh, preview game. Perfect. A preview Excellent. World Junior Championship. Zinna Gemming is World in the Junior. house, Mr. Natap, with Zella. Mr. Zinna Gemming. Welcome, Zinna. Welcome, welcome. Merry Christmas. Okay, yes, indeed. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, the Boston-New Jersey game, one of the top games tonight. I think the Devils, they, they finally snapped a lengthy losing streak with that win uh, over the Florida Panthers the other night. Uh, they they now return home uh, to face a dominant Boston squad that's uh, 
we saw yesterday just defeated the Winnipeg Jets um, and maintained uh, their dominant home record so far where they haven't lost in regulation. But their road uh, record is just as um, phenomenal. I think that they've uh, they've really overachieved in my eyes. Uh, and part of that is because if you look straight up the middle, this team is extremely strong. Like everybody's playing in the right positions. Uh, you've had, you have three very strong uh, centermen. Uh, the goaltending, it doesn't matter pretty much who you put in net, Swayman or All Allmark. They've been uh, playing at the top of their game. Uh, I think this is um, it's going to be a very close matchup here tonight. Uh, New Jersey's perhaps a little bit more surprising than Boston in the sense that, you know, uh, given all their youth, that they, they've been able to put this all together this year. Um, you know, they rank first in expected goals for. Uh, percentage and uh, have also shown no signs of really slowing down in this regard. Uh, it, their defense is still a work in process, I think, um, and and that's uh, I think the area of concern a little bit. Uh, but even even in their six game losing streak, coach, really, I thought that there was only one game that they didn't belong in, um, but the other games that they were playing. They either lost by a goal or, you know, were, were facing some very strong opponents at the wrong time in their uh, progress, uh, namely being in that streak of, of losing. I, I'm going to go with the home team here, Coach. I'm going to take New Jersey to win this game. Uh, Boston played last night, uh, and, and it was a tough, tough game uh, against Winnipeg. So I'm going to take New Jersey by a score of four to three. Four to three for you. I go with uh, Boston four to two. Four to two. Reason? Uh, Ilmark. No reason. <laughs> Omar. Okay. Uh, Blackwood back uh, to back game. Yes. Yes, they have to. No, uh, wasn't Swayman in last night? I'm I sorry. Swimming was in that last. No, Blackwood was at the last... between the pipe. Oh, no, Blackwood. Sorry. Okay, if, I thought you meant for Boston. Yeah. Uh, next, we have Philadelphia and Carolina. I, you know, there are two teams at opposite ends here. Uh, one's at the top of the game. The other one is struggling to just get any sort of uh, victories going. Uh, you know. Philadelphia at the beginning of the year showed a little bit of promise, probably more so than what we were expecting from them. Um, but since then, they've really come down uh, quite hard. Uh, they've had some injuries as well that hasn't helped the uh, matters. Uh, Carolina is, you know, slowly putting it together. Uh, they're at the top of their game. They've beaten some uh, strong opponents in the last, uh, I'd say, three to four weeks. Um, and, you know, it seemed almost impossible that they'd be climbing to the top of the division, but here they are, right? Um, I don't think that they should have much problem. I think Philadelphia tonight is going with uh, Erson and and Carolinas uh, has Kochekov in net, who's also been quite a, a, a nice uh, story uh, for for them. Uh, so I'm going to take Carolina to win this one, four to two. Uh, okay, I'm getting that. I will give you my score, five to one. Four to two for you. Yeah. There we go. Winnipeg, Washington. Ooh, this is going to be a tough one. Uh, you know, the, the total, the total for this game, I think is around six. Uh, if you look at the total goal score, and I think that's where it'll probably end up right around there, uh, at around six goals. Uh, I think both teams, the, you know, they, they played, uh, yesterday so that there's no excuse there. Uh, I think, I think Ovechkin, you know, wants to get that goal and, and get it out of the way as soon as possible. And now that he's 
back at home, I think it presents a great opportunity for him uh, to obviously score. And if he can do it in the first period and sort of, you know, release that that pressure a little bit off his back, uh, it, it would go a long way, not only helping him, but also helping uh, Washington. It looks like we have Inetta uh, Riddich against Lindgren. Last time I checked, um, yeah, you know, on on they're both very good teams. Uh, I like the way they're they're uh, they're structured and composed. Um, uh, if we look at some uh, of the data here, it says that the the Jets are are two and five in their last seven um, in the third game of a three and four situation which doesn't bode well for them. They're also 7-21 and 21 in the last 28 games versus a Metropolitan team. Uh, so th for whatever reason, they've had trouble against the Metro division. Uh, the Capitals, they're 4-1 and one in their last five games versus a Western Conference team. And they're 61-21 and 21 in the last 82 Friday night games. I don't know if that really has any relevance, but I just thought I'd throw that extra information out for you. I'm going to go with the home team here. I think Washington will pull this off with an empty net goal by a score of four to two. Uh, whatever you tried to tell me, I already knew it. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I, think you, I, think, I took the same score like you. <laughs> Nothing influenced you, eh? <laughs> All right, but you did, Mr. Well, Nathap, and not only you. Did I? <laughs> yeah, because I was going to watch uh, with Winnipeg tonight, and back-to-back uh, -back game, but Riddish in the goal, and I'm a little bit nervous about that. Secondly, I feel this yeah. tonight, the Oven Skins going to score his goal tonight, and I feel like he's going to score right away another one. So I think, I think so. the history think is going so. to happen tonight. Just before it's just Absolutely. it's Christmas, Mr. on tap. It's Santa Claus in the house. <laughs> so it's going to happening. Something have to happening at the Capital One Arena tonight, Mr. on tap. It's guaranteed, almost guaranteed. <laughs> uh, I hate that game, Mr. Florida. Florida. Sorry, I hate that game that? now. Florida this Islanders. One? I know you hate it, <laughs> but hear me out. You know the Flyers. They're they're going to New York. Uh, to take on the I Islanders for uh, the third time this season. Florida has won each of the first two meetings between these two teams already, and they're going to hope to sweep the season series here um, tonight. Uh, they played last night and lost to their state rival, the Rangers, of course, uh, and it was a hard uh, a hard game to for them to lose because I thought the first half of the game they, they, they had the better – edge in that game and look like they might pull it off. Um, I think it really comes down to uh, Bobrovsky here. Uh, I think he's playing. Um, the other thing to take note of is we know Varlamov is day-to-day -day and uh, Sorokin played yesterday. So they're, I think they're throwing in Corey Schneider in that tonight. Uh, so that's a definite thing to keep in mind. Um, I think Florida wins tonight, Coach. I'm going to take the underdog. I consider them the underdog in this situation. I think they'll win by a score of four to three. Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And four to three, right? Four to three, yeah. Yeah, so my... <laughs> My premise on a top for, uh, for Florida, for Florida, for Florida, yeah, yes, I thought that one. Um, my plenty was this one three to two, Mr. Nata for Islanders because I thought Zorokin was going to be back to back. I never thought he was going to be with Schneider. I know, but I think he's played a lot of hockey over the last little while, especially since Varlamov has been off. I think he's off on personal leave right now. Uh, so I, we don't know what's going on there, but it's too much for Sorokin at this point. I know. Ah. <laughs> Coach is thinking. I stay with Should Islanders. Should we put the clock on? You stay with the Islanders? Okay. Yeah. Three to two? Yeah, okay. I feel like tonight there's going to be uh, Andrew Almond tonight. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure Danny will like to hear that. Uh, NSU oh. is in the house, Mr. Notap. Thank you to be with us. Uh, cancel the game, Welcome. Red Wings. Uh, about this one over there. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, next, we have Colorado and Nashville. Now, this is a game I kind of went back and forth on. Not not because of the competition, because I think Colorado's by far the, the, the better team. Uh, it's just that they're still injury rate, uh, laden, and they have some key players out of the lineup, which prevents them from sort of skating and scoring at the proficiency that they're usually accustomed to. Uh, it looks like we're going to get a good goaltender battle here between Georgia and Saros in the Nets. Um, the Avalanche, they stroll into Nashville after that 2-1 overtime victory with Montreal on Wednesday. They, um, they're they starting to pick up the pace. Uh, uh, they sit fourth in the Central Division. But I don't think they're overly worried. And I'm definitely not overly worried about Colorado at all. I think that once they get their, their injured players back, uh, they're just going to be fine. Um like if you look at, uh, there's been people that have stepped up and picked up uh, uh, the slack, like especially Ratnan. He's been, I think, unbelievable. Uh, he leads the way right now, I think, with 40 points in just 30 or 31 games, something like that. Uh, I think Georgiev has been playing a huge role in this as well. Uh, not many people like him, but I always thought if he's given a chance to be a number one on some team and he he plays a lot of uh, a lot of games. This guy has the potential to be good, and so far he's proving that. He has a, a 239 goals against average. Uh, the Preds, they return home uh, after a 4-2 victory over Chicago on Wednesday, uh, and they sit currently sixth in the Central. Uh, they're going to have to go on some kind of run in order to, you know, gain uh, pace to stay in this playoff uh, race. And even though, you know, Duchesne has picked it up a little bit and Forsberg has scored as well, but they're well behind the pace that they were at last year. And that, that worries me for Nashville. Um, I'm going to go with Colorado to win this one. I think it'll be close, but I think Colorado wins it by a score of 4-3. Four 4-3. To three. Four to three. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we show up here, my score was 3-2 Colorado. Okay. But? but <laughs> yeah, Colorado did not play yesterday, right? No. Yeah. All right, I will stay with 3-2. <laughs> okay. And don't blame it on me after. <laughs> no, no. Um, but um, this game, I, I confidence... A lot that Nashville can win uh, because if you look about what they play against Montreal, um, I'm going to be upset when the, the finals go that one. <laughs> You're going to be upset when they win? <laughs> I, I feel like Nashville is going to win tonight, but I'm still chicken to take uh, Nashville. No, no, don't, don't. Trust me, Colorado will win this. <laughs> yeah, more right, to William, Nashville. Help me out here. <laughs> Yeah, let's. Oh well, I know that's okay. Yarmo, we've been catching up to Yarmo lately, so is it right. is, is it again another giveaway uh, <laughs> game? <laughs> yes, I think so. He's in a Christmas <laughs> mood. <laughs> okay, let's look at the next game. Of course, Montreal and Dallas. Uh, the Stars are are looking to head into the you know the holiday break. Uh, with not only some rest, but uh, obviously ending off things on a on a winning note, as I suppose every team is. But I think that um, you know, being at the top of the league uh, for as much as they have this year, uh, they've been challenged by other teams in their division, but yet they still remain up there. Um, Montreal, of course, is in just about every single game. Uh, you know, if you Listen to coach. All they want to do is win. So, of course, they're not going to give up, uh, regardless of what the score is. Um, I, I just think that uh, uh, Dallas is 
pretty much complete. Like they they have anything and everything you you, you might want to think about. They got goaltending. They got defense. They have uh, an elite uh, uh, top line. They have their secondary line is really producing as well with the veterans. Uh, uh, I I think this is going to be a lot for Montreal to handle. And Jake Allen's going to steal a lot of rubber tonight. Uh, I'm going to take Dallas to win this game by a score of five to two. Five to two. Yeah, yes. we agree with that one over there. Welcome back, Mr. Uh, MSU. Talk about the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I don't know, Mr. Nazar. We have the same score. That's good, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and next we have Columbus and Chicago. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. This could either has the potential to be a very exciting game if you, if you like a lot of offense because usually when you put – two bottom feeders together uh one thing is guaranteed uh, both teams are towards the bottom uh in almost every offensive and defensive uh um uh, stat that uh, is is available uh the analytics are not very good for either one of these two teams uh but uh, and and so when you put two bad teams together you're usually going to get a lot of goals Um, I like for Chicago the fact that Stalock is now back in the Nets. I think he presents a, be a much better option than Morazic. Um, the ba Blackhawks, they've actually been outscored 35 to 9 in their last eight games. Um, you, you know, uh, combined, these two teams are on a 13 game uh, losing streak between the, the two of them. Uh, There's not a lot here to pick, uh, except for the fact that, like I said, I think I think I like the fact that Chicago's at home and Stalock's in net. Um, also, one other thing that could sway you, Coach, and everybody else, is the fact that Chicago's won 12 out of the last 17 uh, games that they've played versus Columbus. Um, so that's that's also something to just. Uh, park in the back of your mind. So I'm going to take Chicago to win this one uh, by a score of five to three. Five to three. Uh, I did not know what to do, Mr. Nata, about that one over there, but um, I think this is the end of the, the streak. Yeah, for one of the teams. <laughs> I go right. Chicago. Yeah, and, and we know where Nick is going here, but. <laughs> I know. Imagine so this, this uh, Nick, what, what we did tonight. We took your team. <laughs> Remember that one over right. there? Nick, the reason why you've been in jail so much and the, the jail's named after you is because you refuse to not take <laughs> Chicago. Or you take, actually, Chicago every time. That's the problem. But now, <laughs> we took Chicago, Mr. Nathan. Maybe we'll go to jail, no? <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> Not tonight, not tonight. Chicago wins tonight, guaranteed. Okay, next. Uh, But honestly, I have Columbus Vancouver. before we uh, you start to talk. Okay, so you want Columbus? No, I say with Chicago you. because you said 12 and 17. <laughs> That changed my mind right yeah. there. <laughs> well, okay, that's good. I, I mean, 12, yes, 12 out of 17, but you also have to put it in perspective. This is... That's not this year, right? This year, I think they've only played once before. Um, and the other games come from previous years, different players, different, you know, situations. So you have to sort of take it with a grain of salt, I think. You want me to send uh, my phone so off? <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> you do what you like. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go here. Uh, we got Edmonton and Vancouver. I mean, I... I'm obviously going to take Edmonton here. Uh, the Canucks, they they come to Edmonton after that 6-5 shootout victory at the against the Seattle on the uh, yesterday. So they're they're on a back to back. Uh, right now they're in sixth place, but we're seeing that the Canucks when they when they get that offense going consistently, uh, they're a team that you know uh, wins their share fair share of games but defensively they they've they've looked very scattered uh they 
even when they have leads, they blow it. Uh, that's what was the problem at the beginning of the year. I don't think they fixed that problem in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so I can't, I can't possibly see Vancouver being in 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 the run for a playoff spot because that recipe is doomed for failure rather than success. Um, and also. On top of that, you throw in the fact that uh, Demko has not had one of his best years. Uh, as a matter of fact, his goals against average, are, it's almost at four. I think it's at 395 at this point. And uh, he's, uh, uh, I think his record is three and 10 right now. So not very good. Um, so that's important to know. Uh, the Oilers, they return home after uh, their game with Dallas that they convincingly won, I thought, against a very good team, 6-3. to three. Um, I know one of the goals was an empty net goal, but, you know, the big guys were the big guys. Uh, they came through in that game, uh, as they have all year long. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, with 124 goals on the season, they, they really have to thank uh, McDavid and Drysaddle because they've produced – I forget what the percentage was, but it's it's pretty fascinating. Uh, it, like they've produced the, the majority of their offense by a long shot, and um, you know, again, even that kind of has me a bit weary. Uh, it's great to have those elite players, but you also need you need the, your role players. You need the ones that do a lot of checking. Uh, uh, you need a solid defense, which Edmonton right now has an above average, uh, average to a slightly above average defense. And that's their, really, that's their Achilles heel. Now they've gotten lucky in that Skinner has been able to come in and perform moderately well and uh, really give them a chance for their offense to get clicking. Um, and I think that he's going to overtake Campbell. I know logistically you you play the guy that you pay the money to and that's Campbell but if you want to get into the playoffs you better you better win and that's the most important thing here so I'm gonna go with Edmonton to defeat Vancouver five to two five to two all right there uh, mr Natap, same score okay we have Mr. Jeffrey Corey, and uh, we have William Welcome Snyder, Jeffrey. and and uh, Rick Kane, all three. Thanks so much to be with us. Don't forget to click on the likes. Uh. And what do we have here? L.A. and Arizona. Wow. Well, L.A., they're in Arizona, number one. Uh, looks like it's Jonathan Quick against uh, Vimalka. So... Right now, I would say advantage Arizona in that regard. Um, L.A. was playing last night. Arizona did not. So advantage Arizona there as well. Um, they Arizona seems to be playing better at their new arena in Tempe. Um, it's, it's fascinating, but, you know, it's better than what they were doing at their old arena. Uh, so... You know, uh, again, I would say advantage Arizona in that regard. Uh, the Kings, they, they've they won uh, just one in, of their last six games that have been played on a two-night back-to-back. Um, you know, and they come off of a very tough game that they played last night against Calgary. The Coyotes, they, they scored two or more goals in 15 straight outings. And the Kings really have struggled to defend all season long. So uh, that's going to be tough. If, if Arizona can jump out to a quick lead here, it's going to be very difficult for L.A. to, to sort of find their legs uh, as the game goes on here. I think the key for L.A. to win is to, to get catch that early lead and try to maintain it and close things down a little bit and then put a final push in the third period. Uh, but I, I don't think that's going to happen here. I'm going with Arizona to win 4-3. Four 4-3. To three. Four to three. I go with Los Angeles 4-2. to two. Okay. <laughs> 
Are you starting Bennington in your fantasy tonight? Yeah, I'm behind. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing. Me I, too. I, I went to the church, of, of, of course, put some light up for Bennington. <laughs> you lit a candle, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, uh, I'm I'm in the same situation. I have to hope my goalies uh, show up today. Um, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, uh, this might be uh, humorous for you, Coach. But I went and picked up Staylock, knowing that he was going to be playing tonight. So <laughs> Chicago better win tonight, Nick. <laughs> okay, so we got St. Louis and Vegas here. Uh, you know, in the latest slate of of games here one of the later games is this one here between bennington and i think now it's been confirmed that it's thompson playing um this is the second time that the two have played already and uh, the blues battled out a 3-2 a uh, victory on their home ice the first time um you, you know they, they've uh they've both been sort of been up and down this year like I, I think vegas mostly because they they have the greater talent let me put it this way vegas does but because they've had some injuries they've kind of played 500 over the last uh 12 games or so um they just broke a two-game losing streak themselves um and i i think that they'll continue to to perform well um i think st louis is the one that's a little bit more on uh, on the doubt list for me. So I'm going to go with Vegas to win. They'll score in an empty net, 4-2. to two. Uh, Vegas? Vegas, yes. All right. I know he's going over time, Mr. Natap. Unfortunately, Bennington is going to drop me down again. But um, <laughs> Thompson, this is Bennington, by the way. Yes, confirmed. Okay. And our last game of the night, uh, Calgary and Anaheim. Uh, the Flames are going to Anaheim to play here for the first time this season. You know, it's pretty safe to say that Anaheim is by far, you know, one of the worst teams in the league this year. Uh, they're dead last in almost every offensive category you can think of, and their defensive metrics are are, are just as bad. Um, uh, even knowing all of this, though, it's it's hard this year, it's hard to trust Calgary. Uh, just when you think they'll win, they lose. And when you think they're going to lose, they win. Uh, it's it's a, a difficult, difficult thing. Um, and I think part of it part of it was the regression aspect that I spoke about from the beginning of the year that I knew was going to happen, but not to this extent. The other part of it is the, the number of changes that happened on this team. And right now, even though Huberto is starting to pick things up a bit, um, it, it's still nowhere near his his uh, old uh, um, potential that he he's he's exhibited when he was in Florida. Um, Calgary, they're they're not a great team on the road when it comes to scoring goals, but they have managed to score 15 goals in their last three games. Um, you know, can they continue this tonight? I, I don't think it should be a problem. Uh, we're looking at uh, Markstrom and Nett against uh, Dostal. Uh, last time I checked uh, with the goaltending situation. But even though Markstrom is making me nervous, I, I like it. I feel more comfortable when Vladar is in that. Um, I think Calgary should pull this off by a score of 4-2. to 4-2? to two. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, again, you copy me again. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So I think we have three games friend tonight, Mr. Nata. Do we? Okay. That's we have good. Los Angeles, Arizona. Yeah. We have uh, Florida Islanders. Yes. And we have Boston, New Jersey. Uh, you took Boston, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And I was said to you for a Monday, but the next time we do the one on show, I said, you know, I should take Nashville over Colorado, but that's another subject <laughs> for any time. You'll say it tonight. I know you. <laughs> I, I, I just don't say it on air. About, about oh, that inner tonight. tap. 
we'll see about this one there. So uh, we did the overpass today, but we apologize. We have a good conversation, a great thing about this. Uh, and that's conclude another week of the, the warm-up show. We'll be back only next week when the Hockey Nation will be back. Uh, uh, I think it's Tuesday, Wednesday next week, uh, Mr. Natap. Perfect. Sounds great. And uh, uh, we want to wish uh, you personally, Mr. Yeah. Natap, a Merry Christmas and your family. Happy holidays. Uh, and uh, be, be safe. Uh, uh, be uh, aware. It's a big storm right now. Stay home. Uh, enjoy yes, uh, the yes. food. And enjoy to watching hockey game uh, all around the, the North America for the next uh, today. And then uh, we're going to be the World Junior Championship. Mr. Natap uh, start the 26th. And we're going to cover this. with We invite Very everybody exciting. after the show tonight uh, to join me at 11.15 with the, uh, the preview of uh, World Junior Championship with Mr. Michael DeVillado. So uh, anything you want to add before we we'll leave? Definitely be there. Yeah, I just want to uh, extend my my wishes to everybody in the Hockey Nation and yourself, Coach, for a very Merry Christmas. Um, please stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy family. And um, I, I got to say, it's always a great deal of uh, uh, fun and very knowledgeable when we get together here on the Hockey Nation. Uh, I enjoy our conversations in the chat and, and on air quite a bit so uh, let's continue to do that as we move towards a new year yeah absolutely about that next we're going to do a little bit the uh, review of the year 2022 mr Nathap. Uh, tonight i have the wish list uh, of the team but we're going to go next time because we have no time anymore and we will be back at eight o'clock for the game on 12 versus the dallas star until the next time mr Nathap, we want to remind you one thing you are awesome you are amazing you are the best And remember, you have greatness inside of you. Here we go, Mr. Nathap. Thanks so much again for an amazing, great show tonight. We thanks everybody in the chat. Uh, thanks so much for your participation tonight. And most important thing, we wish you, everybody, happy holidays. Uh, enjoy and uh, be safe. I can't wait to see you until the next time. Uh, thanks so much, Mr. Nathap, tonight. Good night, everyone. And enjoy your Santa Claus uh, for the next couple of days. <laughs> Will do. How are you? Have a good night. It's Christmas, ladies and gentlemen, and we have a super chat. We have to do it. We have to do the super chat one more time, ladies and gentlemen, directly from Ryan Kirk. Super chat, rivers. Chop, chop, chop. Oh, he did it again, uh, Mr. Ryan Cook. Uh, thanks so much for your super chat. Uh, hype for everybody. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. Uh, I can't wait to see you the next time. And like we do at the end of each show, guys, uh, at the end of Completely, we do what? We do... Booyah!